All right, what's going on, guys? It is your boy TKD. One, two, three, here back in Plays and Swords. It has been over a week since this trailer dropped. I know I've been busy, and this video has taken a lot of work in terms of research. I had to learn a lot about Norse pathology. I had to do a ton of different, you know, stuff and everything. My notes look crazy, but we're going to break down the God of War Ragnarok PS5 story trailer that we got last week with the state of play. If you guys enjoyed, or you know what, not just enjoyed, if you learn anything new from this video please leave a like on it it really does help me a lot on the channel because yo this took a lot of time this took a lot of effort you know what i'm saying and i have a day job you know what i'm saying but hope you all enjoy my breakdown here of the god of war ps5 story trailer and if you do end up enjoying make sure to stick around on the channel and stay subscribed to keep up with the latest and greatest and all things god of war ragnarok we do have road to ragnarok our dedicated god of war podcast that is going up very very soon here it is starting up very soon here we have a co-host i need a the intro but let's get that all aside here let's break down the god of war ragnarok ps5 story trailer so first up here we do get vo from atreus saying quote everyone keeps secrets sometimes it's the only way to protect the ones we love and we get really cool shots of kratos dropping his weapons and looking at the leviathan axe and sending it down and it's really cool that he you know just has no problem dropping his blades of chaos because they're his right but setting down the leviathan axe very gently because of course this belongs to his late wife Faye. And I do believe that the line that Atreus is talking about here does also apply to Kratos at one point in time when he felt that the best way to protect Atreus was to hide his own true godhood self from Atreus and not be honest that he was, of course, the ghost of Sparta and is the god of war, right? And that he is a god. He did not tell that to Atreus because he wanted to protect him. But then also the line does refer to, you know, everyone keeps secrets, right? So what secret is Atreus hiding here right and we see Atreus having his hand on a tree and it emanates kind of a glow from the tree right this has to be a callback to his mother Faye as she used the initial gold handprint type of marking on a tree to keep Kratos and Atreus hidden from threats but also in a very similar way throughout the entire game of God of War 2018 there are these gold markings that really lead you on your way as a player but the in the world explanation is that Faye put these markings around Around the journey so that they knew exactly where to go because she foresaw the journey that Kratos and Atreus will take in the game itself. So really cool symbolism there with that gold emanating light, but there is certainly a deeper connection that Faye and Atreus have that goes deeper than just mother and son and is more associated probably with them both being giants. And as we'll see later in the trailer, Atreus doesn't want to tell Kratos and maybe because he knows that Kratos' death is incoming as we saw in the end of God of War 2018. And I say this because in game, we only see that Kratos visibly saw his demise in the drawings on the wall, and we don't see Atreus see that visually. So maybe, you know, Atreus knows kind of subconsciously and doesn't know that Kratos also knows that as well. Next up, we hear Tyr say, quote, I know you, God killer. What is it you want from me? Is it a God of War you came to find? I love this quote because we know in the original God War 2018 game that Tyr went and met with all the different gods of different belief systems and such. Even Greece in the Greek world where they believe, of course, in Greek mythology. So we know that Tyr has definitely heard of the ghost of Sparta being Kratos, right? And I love that he knows of Kratos' past side, which probably makes him a little bit more hesitant and, you know, really does, you know, call him God, killing everything. And like, he knows that he's killed plenty of gods in his lifetime. But we see Kratos freeing Tyr from his imprisonment and I assume that this is a manner so that he can help prevent Ragnarok, right? And with Tyr being one of Odin's sons and being the Norse god of war and laws, he could definitely prove useful on this journey as well and he may have information that we may have been able to piece together what he knows that will assist Kratos directly in this journey to stop Ragnarok. And we also get this shot of Kratos and Tyr opening up this door and Atreus running through the middle of it and we see this really interesting looking room with two different hallways that lead to a much lighter lushful type of you know environment and you know vegetation and such then we have a very foggy decayed dark type of other hallway that is also leading somewhere right so i believe that this is going to be vanaheim the home of the vanir gods and my main reasoning is this description here quote vanaheim is an endless expanse of bright and darkly colorful forests and shining lakes 
place where wild magic runs amok and the very air is filled with disembodied voices. If we're the couple that description of having a bright and darkly forest and all that with the two different sides of these entrances, we can see where I'm probably getting at. This is probably Vanaheim, right? And then we see Tyr dragging a Vanir, which brings a question as to why they're even in Vanaheim in the first place. The Vanir are described as being a group of gods associated with the fertility, wisdom, and the ability to see into the future, right? So could Kratos, Tyr, and Atreus be after them so that they may help them see into the future to assist them in stopping Ragnarok or for a totally different reason that we will discuss later on in this breakdown. Next up, we see Odin in the flesh. He says, quote, You don't really want war, do you, Kratos? All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. And trust me, he has a lot more to say to Kratos in this trailer that is absolutely just insane statements, right? But the way he's just standing there and shows up at the doorstep of the home of Kratos and Atreus, it's just very reminiscent of the same way that Baldur showed up to their doorstep in the beginning of God of War 2018 and the way Thor does as well in the end of God of War 2018. Even though in the same way that Thor going to Kratos' house was a dream that Atreus had, maybe this is some sort of similar thing you know Odin is very much well known to manipulating people and to kind of like you know playing mind games and mind tricks on them so maybe this is Odin kind of having another mind game with Atreus himself next up we get this really cool shot of the soldiers on like a gold mural type of thing that are fading away kind of almost dissolving into this like gold dust right and the logos on the shields of the warriors that are on this picture are from from Muspelheim, which is the land of the fire Jotunhar, Midgar, which are the home of the humans and other races, and Jotunheim, the land of the frost giants. So this could be them storming Asgard to fight the gods, which is prophesied in Ragnarok to happen in real Norse mythology. But in the real Norse mythology, Loki is also supposed to bring the undead from Helheim to Asgard as well, along with the giants to assist them in attacking Asgard and the Aesir or God. So maybe that will also happen as well, but this mural just shows the people of Muspelheim, Midgard, and Jotunheim as well. Next up, we have a conversation between Kratos and Atreus, where Kratos starts off by saying, What is it you will not tell me? I can't talk about it, but I just need you to trust me. And this dialogue will continue, but there is a lot of head clashing between Kratos and Atreus at this point in the trailer, but we do see Atreus holding this stone, right? And I found two things I want to bring to everyone's attention here. So first up, I found in Norse mythology, the Singestein, which is translated into singing stone or chanting stone, is an object that appears in the account of Loki and Heimdall's fight in the form of seals. Some scholars have interpreted it as the location of the struggle, others as the object they were struggling over, right? So there is a possibility that Heimdall and Loki could be both fighting over this stone type thing, right? Since Heimdall is a god who keeps watch for invaders and the onset of Ragnarok itself from his home which is at the end of the rainbow bridge by frost and so he will no doubt be a part of this story in some way shape or form and maybe loki's conflict with heimdall centers around this blue orb and by loki i mean of course atreus as well because atreus is loki in this story but what exactly is this stone and why would there be a conflict over it right this isn't the first time we have seen this stone before we also get a look at the stone from the previous god of ragnarok gameplay trailer at playstation showcase 2021 one. And according to a Reddit user named Azissa, the runes on it translate to Hati, which as we'll get to next and at the end of the trailer is one of the two wolves that chase the sun and moon and that once they catch up to the sun and moon, they devour them and Ragnarok will begin by plunging the world into darkness. So does this orb like somehow summon Hati? Is there another, you know, orb out there that has Skull, which is the other wolf's name that chases the sun and moon? Many questions there, but definitely something that they are trying to tell us here with these trailers is that this orb will be very very important to Hati and Skull. Next up we have Kratos saying quote we follow your every whim but you don't believe in any of it and still I follow. So tensions are rising with the father and son it is not a perfect relationship at this point in the game but we do get some really cool drawings here that they are looking upon in this cave or rock type thing right so first up we get a decent look at the world tree in the drawing that shows the nine realms. We have Asgard, Vanaheim, Svartalheim, Helheim, Muspelheim, and Niflheim all left alone, while Midgard, Jotunheim, and Alfheim are crossed out. 
This to me could indicate which realms are already lost to Ragnarok or ones that we've already been to maybe and they're keeping track or whatever. I'm not sure what the deal is here. Probably ones that have been lost to Ragnarok. That's probably my best guess here, but you know, we'll see what happens. But then when we get a much greater look at the overall drawing, we have a really cool story here that could be telling us how Ragnarok will play out in God of War Ragnarok. So Tyr being imprisoned, then being set free and going on to release Skull and Hati, who are the wolves that are meant to chase the sun and moon as they are prophesied to do so. Eventually, they are meant to catch up to both the sun and moon, devour them, which will plunge the world into darkness, which sets Ragnarok into motion. The world will then flood, and then Shurter will plunge his sword into Asgard that will destroy the world with fire insane these drawings seem to be depicting that overall general story of ragnarok right so releasing tier might be the key to releasing skull and hati or at the bare minimum getting the other ball with skull's name on it that could somehow summon skull as well the dialogue between kratos and atreus continues with kratos saying quote all that matters is that you are safe but that's not all that matters who's keeping you safe i do not need you to protect me sure about that very tense conversations here but what's even crazier here is what they're showing on screen here okay so we see freya take off atreus's necklace and on this necklace is one of the arrow points of one of the green mistletoe arrows that sindri gave to atreus after atreus and kratos slayed that dragon to save sindri however if you recall afterwards atreus's quiver gets broken during the fight with the dragon and kratos uses one of the arrow tips to fix it then then when they return to Freya, she freaks out over Atreus having them and throws him into the fire, which will bring us to the end of the game. When Balder punches Atreus, he also punches that green mistletoe arrow tip that Kratos used to fix Atreus's quiver, thus breaking the protection spell and making him vulnerable to death. It's also a great reminder of the promise that Freya made to Kratos for the death of his son. I will rain down every agony every violation imaginable upon you. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell that is my promise. This is insane, right? That number one, that Atreus kept this arrow tip as like a necklace. I'm very curious to see why Atreus did this. Does he feel guilt for having Boulder go out like that? Does he blame himself in a way? And that really does go into the mythos because in Norse mythology lore, Loki does kill Boulder. That starts this whole different domino effect that starts Ragnarok in the first place. This dialogue with Kratos and Atreus ends with Atreus saying, you sure about that? And we see Atreus and Kratos fight these two Valkyries in a dark blue and red area, which I believe to be areas in between the realms themselves. In Norse mythology, another symptom of Ragnarok will be that the world tree that binds all the realms will start to shudder and break, causing earthquakes and cracks to form at the boundaries of every realm. This could be where this scene is taking place. It looks like it when there's just a white void below Kratos when he's hanging off the cliff. So it seems like this could be this in between area realm that is prophesized to be caused by these cracks between the boundaries of the realms themselves. And thanks to the Game Informer's Fartholheim gameplay that we covered here on the channel, we do have confirmation that earthquakes are confirmed to be happening throughout the realms in God of War Ragnarok during this time. So there definitely could be that instance where this is caused by one of the earthquakes that happened throughout the realms. We also hear one of the Valkyries tell Kratos that he's a pretender god and one of them chants for for the all fathers so clearly they were sent by odin but it is interesting that they call him a pretender god so odin definitely gives more context to it later on but kratos is half mortal just like atreus is half god as well where he's half giant half god and technically another part human as well because kratos is only half human half god and then kratos gives the hardest bar of the decade quote death can have me when it burns me absolute gang gang on the set kratos gonna be in there like a savage i cannot wait to see it then we have odin saying these incredibly disrespectful lines to kratos he says quote what do you even know of 
God. In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? No! You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster who kills without cause. And this quote is extremely damaging, I have to assume, right? Because Owen is known for manipulation and toying with people. This is no doubt his attempt at getting into Kratos' head. Because he's right, I don't think anyone has ever prayed to Kratos, ever treated him like a true god, right? And Kratos never really wanted to be treated like a god because he hates gods, right? Like that's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he's not with the godhood, right? But I do have to imagine that Odin calling Kratos a monster definitely Definitely has to trigger him to some degree after what Athena told him in God of War 2018. Which is nothing. Pretend to be everything you are not. Teacher. Husband. Father. But there is one unavoidable truth you will never escape. <laughs> you cannot change. You will always be a monster. I know. But I am your monster no longer. So as Odin is saying that crazy quote to Kratos, there is a bunch of different quick gameplay montage clips that I'll just hit pretty quickly because there's not really a ton to garner from these shots. This first shot with this big creature, I believe to be Svartalheim, that's just my honest guess, but you know, then again, it could be Vanaheim as well, it's really hard to tell, but I'm guessing on Svartalheim with this one. Next up, we get some gameplay segments in Niflheim, which is very good to see because in Norse mythology, Loki recruits the dead to help him and the giants assault Asgard and the Aesir gods, so we're definitely going to get some of that, I'm assuming, with the return of Niflheim. And next up here, this other shot, my guess is that this could be Alfheim due to the elves presence but the sky is dark right so maybe the dark elves took control of Alfheim during the years in between the two games of God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok since the original game ends with the light elves having control of the light in Alfheim. Next we see this really weird shot of Kratos and Atreus in some kind of like fast moving vehicle type contraption and Kratos does beat the shit out of this enemy using his long tongue that that looks wild right but they seem to be on Midgard just looking at the terrain and stuff like that so not sure where this is actually taking place let me know what you guys see in the comments below what are your thoughts here behind this is this, this is a very weird shot about you know just a fast moving segment that I don't know where Kratos and Atreus are these next few shots are from the same area that I think will be Vanaheim based off of a clue we'll talk about a little bit later although this soldier with the colorful blade is called the Inhar a soldier from Valhalla to assist Odin and so Odin in Norse mythology does call from the soldiers that have died in combat that went to Valhalla and they come down to assist Odin against the Loki forces which are the Jotnar giants and the undead from Niflheim. This next shot is clearly from Musfulheim and I'm very glad to see it here because it seems to be getting expanded for God of War Ragnarok and we'll be able to have much more to do in that location other than just combat challenges like in God of War 20 18. And this enemy is pretty crazy looking and the rune that is glowing purple is intriguing as well because although it does mean lake, right, it does have a secret meaning according to the Elder Futhark that means chaos and so definitely this enemy does seem like chaos to some degree. Now we go on to the next quick montage segment where we see Kratos running with this person on his back and while many speculated that this could be Anger Boda or Freya for some reason, I'm actually on the side of the people who are saying it's Freya, Freya's twin brother. This would definitely make sense due to his connection and involvement with the Anaheim Dark Elf Light Elf conflict that persists to this day. We even get to see his temple in Gawa 2018 as well, but within the temple we find this scroll that says that Freya is lost and the Light Elves are trying to find their beloved god. They want to find him because they believe quote Freya's presence will ensure true peace. They also believe that he's either being held in Asgard 
or Vanaheim itself. So maybe Kratos is rescuing Freyr on Vanaheim, that way he can possibly return to Alfheim, thus reuniting and bringing peace to the elves, and they could potentially help Kratos, Tyr, Atreus, and Mimir go up to Asgard maybe in the final battle, maybe that's what my thought is, but definitely Freyr is needed on Alfheim to restore balance and peace to the elves, right? So very curious to see how that all pans out, but then we see Freya definitely is chasing us here with the bending, you know, leaves and vegetation and all that and plants that uh, definitely are abilities that she can do in the original game. And if this is Freya here, right, if Freya is pursuing Kratos trying to get her brother, right, this could be a similar thing with Baldur in the original game where Baldur was a reoccurring, you know, enemy that pops up here and there. So maybe Freya will fill in that role here because we see her in the snow shots in the beginning of the trailer and all that and we see her now on what I think to be Vanaheim. So maybe she is on the run. She is pursuing Kratos and trying to kill Kratos and Atreus for killing Baldur. We do get to see some really quick shots of Kratos and Atreus riding through Midgard which is probably the same scene where we see Freya attack them in the gameplay trailer from 2021 but the two wolves in this shot have been confirmed to be named Specky and Svana in case you didn't know. And we also see some underwater shots of Kratos and Atreus. This could be connected to the flooding that will occur during Ragnarok or maybe just a cool set piece you know what I'm saying who knows and then as Kratos says this quote fate only binds you if you let it we see this incredible shot that took my breath away I'm not exaggerating this is one of my favorite scenes in the trailer period we see Skull and Hati chase the moon and the sun specifically we see Skull chase the sun just as Hati is meant to chase the moon but stays back it is a solar eclipse that's happening here in this scene since the moon is in front of the sun and this literally took my breath away as i said before but as skull chases the sun we see the sky kind of part and make the moon visible and the night sky visible as well and it looks absolutely insane maybe hati will then go chase the moon right after that but it looks absolutely incredible so my thought here is what's going on here right like if kratos and atreus are kind of like trying to i guess stop ragnarok from happening and maybe it is an unstoppable thing that will just be inevitable that very much might be the case but they are doing one of the steps that are voluntarily meant to kick ragnarok into full motion so i'm curious as to the end game here what's going on here they're voluntarily making skull and hati chase the moon and the sun very curious to see what goes on here after this but Kreo says do what is necessary not because it is written we see Kratos back on Alfheim in front of the pillar of light that he was in front of in the original game where he heard Atreus' inner thoughts and most importantly, Faye's voice. I do want to do a separate video about this, but this is making me think that we really could see Faye in Ragnarok and my theory video about Felicia Day being Faye could actually be true. Go check out that video guys, link below in the description, but could he be seeking Faye to speak to her again? Does this take place after he helps Freya escape from Vanaheim and return to Alfheim with the elves? Could Kratos need Faye's guidance and wisdom? We shall definitely see what goes on in this scene. Next up, we see this underwater creature that could very well be Ron from Norse mythology, who was the personification of the sea. But there's no way to tell, honestly, so that was just a big guess there. But who knows what Kratos could be telling this creature under the sea, but it is very intriguing nonetheless. And then we see Kratos and Atreus walk towards this like frozen tree-looking thing that seems to have Odin's raven all over it what do you guys think down below what are your thoughts on this scene very curious to see what this ends up being in ragnarok and then after that we see what appears to be alfheim due to the light beam in the background a giant jellyfish rises from below maybe it comes from alfheim's waters that we sailed across in god War 2018 and also alfheim no longer has this warm purple orange hue to it it's not like a blue type of hazy type of hint to it so could either be what i guessed before 
or about the Dark Elves having control over Alfheim at the beginning of Ragnarok, or something having to do with Ragnarok itself. And the second to last shot here in this trailer is Kratos helping Tyr up in a show of respect seemingly, and it's cool to see Tyr hold that Blade of Chaos as Kratos uses it to help him up. Very just cool imagery to see someone else hold the Blade of Chaos, you know? Maybe that's telling that maybe someone else will wield the Blades of Chaos at the end of Ragnarok or at some point during Ragnarok. Atreus, do you think you can handle the Blades of Chaos maybe? Who knows? Who knows? And the last words of the trailer is Kratos saying, We will make our own destiny. This epic Thor battle ends the trailer. I definitely think this happens early on, and my guess is that he is the first boss we fight in a similar vein that Baldur was our first fight in God of War 2018. And I say that because they are fighting over a frozen over version of the Lake of the Nine in Midgard. You can even see the bridge to the world tree in the background as well. Some side notes though, I do think that we will at some point wield Thor's hammer in this game, and lightning will be the other element that will be analogous to ice being with the leviathan axe and fire being with the blades of chaos but we'll see if that actually all plays out what's interesting to note here is that kratos doesn't have his blades of chaos here did he leave them back at the house at the cabin or something like that was he in a rush what's up with that why doesn't he have his blades of chaos on him during this fight and last thing here is that thor has stones in his head right which was found on Reddit, and I think Mimir is best in doing the explaining for this story. I'll tell you the story of Hrunia, the brawler, the real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but no. Hrunia, you see, was born with neither head nor heart, so the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Hrungnir his fill of mead and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrunir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock, he doesn't notice Hrunir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mimir. Oof, man, I made just under three minutes of a trailer into an over 25 minute breakdown, guys. If that doesn't deserve a like, please, come on, yo, come on, man, help your boy out. Give me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. If you learned anything new about this trailer down below, let me know what you learned, what you think that I missed, or what I really did miss. Let me know all those thoughts down below in that comment section. And also, while you are down there, do not forget our description. You can find links to our Discord. Discord, our Twitter, and of course our Anchor link. That way you can listen to our long form content and podcast format. Those, of course, being the Road to Podcast series, which will be covering God of War Ragnarok in the very near future. A lot of you, if you enjoyed it as well, stay subscribed to Place Hidden Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Thank you all for watching, and as always, greatness awaits.